One of my all-time favorite quotes. We don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents. Bob Ross. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't wait until you finished that one. <laughs> to have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds. And must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens Podcast, where we talk about all things gardening and give the information out for you to be successful in your garden, whether it's your first or your last. We are your hosts, Ben, the Backyard Gardener, and Batavia, the Front Yard Gardener. One in the country. One in the city. And this podcast is a companion podcast to the upcoming documentary, Backyard Gardens, a documentary about two families growing food for the first time in a world that lacks nutrition. Now, why would I use that quote, Batavia? Why do you think? Because the happy little accident is the um, treachery that's happened with my blueberry bushes. And you are aware of that? Is no. That... Okay. So do you, you do know who Bob Ross is. Is that the guy, the painting guy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So whenever you go to plant a garden, how many times have you done it just right? Each time. Oh, Wow. Everybody Mm -hmm. heard it first here. Batavia is a special kind of gardener. Mm -hmm. I thought that's why you invited me onto this podcast uh, to co-host with you, because you knew there was perfection. Yeah. (laughs) No, like uh, maybe the third year of me trying a thing. (laughs) Like, yeah, I've never get it right. I've never gotten it right. Mm -hmm. But I will say that each time I make an accident, it always comes out better than if it came out if I did it perfectly the first time. Now, let me ask you, do you think that um, these happy accidents are happening because you didn't fully plan out what you were doing? That's what happens to me. Like I get like 75, 80 percent through with my plan and I'm like, okay, I'm going to start. And um, then I realize, oh, shoot, I can't get to this this bed from this side. No, (laughs) it's just because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Ah, okay. But. We're getting pretty deep already. Nobody even knows what we're talking about. We're talking about this because we are going to talk about garden design today. Either vegetable or flower. Doesn't matter. So that being said, Bob Ross is the man. He makes every accident feel a little bit better. Doesn't matter if you pee your pants or you plant your garden (laughs) wrong. It always makes a little bit better when you listen to Bob Ross. Or if you pee your pants while in the garden because, you know. Because you get so excited. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, there he goes. There it goes. Mm-hmm. But um, no, like even like when I'm doing like a video or something mm-hmm. or, you know, some kind of show or anything, if I do something wrong in camera, it usually makes me really try so hard to correct it that it comes out better than I could have imagined. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So same with like my art because I draw a lot. Mm-hmm. So the, every time it always comes out so much better. I don't know why. So is the, Bob, the first the first mistake almost refocuses you? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's because you want to fix it so bad that you just you know you make it happen. But um, because I didn't even tell you this yet, did I? There's a reason why I wanted to do this episode. No, you didn't tell me. You demanded that we do this episode, and I, I said, absolutely. I did. You I know fully why? support you and your brainchild. No, why? <laughs> well, I think I have an idea why. <laughs> well, because I need to design a bed. Yeah. I, uh, I have a project planned for the fall. Fall, winter, spring of mm-hmm. next year, and I'm having troubles coming up with designs. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we should all learn together, because we want to learn to grow and grow for change. There it is. Here, here. Look here, how here. cheesy. You looked at me like that was the cheesiest thing I've said. Because that's my role here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm head of the cheese department. Uh, so the bed you're talking about designing, this is a singular bed and you want to design it for fall 2020, winter 2020, then spring 2021? I want it to be ready for spring 2021. But I've already made my mistake and I haven't even started yet. Is this a a veggie garden or a combo garden? It's not a veggie garden at all. It's it's an all flower garden? It's not necessarily flowers, but it's plants. Okay. 
So this is going to be the best episode ever. It is. It is the best episode, <laughs> but I'm going to break your heart a little bit first. Oh yeah, okay. It's fine. So, I want to talk about because, you know, we we do a lot about vegetables and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, I want to talk about that for a portion and then I want to come back to this cuz I want everybody to get their fill. Okay. Does that sound, are you, are you cool right. with that? Yeah, yeah. There was a build up. You got me excited. I started leaning into the mic like this is it. <laughs> This is what I've been waiting for. So I'm going to have to wait like, you know, a few more minutes for it. Okay. All right. I, I can handle but it. But no, it can, it can work either way because we'll talk about vegetables and, you know, we're going to talk about designing it to the eye though, not to like plant specifications mm-hmm. or anything mm-hmm. like that. So, cause we want to make our gardens pleasant to look at, right? I do. Yeah. And I, I know think that's, that's been something be... you've been striving for in, in the last year or two specifically. Uh, 10 really but you know (laughs) but I mean it's you know it's one of those things where I said it in the past where like the garden even if you if you don't grow any flowers Mm -hmm. like you still want your garden to be pretty to look at and it will be pretty no matter what I believe right if you have something growing let's yeah yeah so well no not really so um no give me a second here if you're on a farm and we were talking about this yesterday, I think, where, you know, you have rows of things planted. That's so super functional. So there isn't a, a design from an aesthetic perspective that you're loading into that. Like, that's just not how it works. That's not the expectation. Untrue. So that's not how it works for me. That's not my expectation. Um, but when it comes to a home garden, which I believe a lot of the folks that listen have or want to have home gardens um that is it's again it's something that's surrounded by your, you know your home is surrounded by it right or the garden is surrounding your home something like that if it's um, your house that's surrounding your home everybody yeah. else that's in around their home okay Gosh, you're getting technical <laughs> huh <laughs> and the world is surrounding us all um so with that in mind well yeah i don't think anyone really has a desire to have something that's not so attractive in their home even if you can say well i am growing food right um so and that's actually something that is really really important to me with the all right you're gonna beat this out front yard garden mm, um beep. just because yeah you're in the middle of the city right urban gardener and um like, I want to make sure that it's not unsightly. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, let's go back, though. Why do you think you don't you think farmers are just like, oh, that's a sexy row there. Like, that's what you that's what you're thinking is happening. Uh, Hold on. My dad's calling me. Never mind. That's OK. Super bad mistake. Didn't put my phone on mute. You didn't. You don't have a checklist, do you? Uh, I do. I just <laughs> bypassed it today. Okay, all right. And yes, that is the old Nokia ringtone for all of my friends that are <laughs> around the same age as me. Um, but no. Um, well, first of all, this podcast is not designed for farmers. Um, they're more than welcome to listen, but they're not going to get a whole lot out of what we talk about because. You know, they're doing basically monocrops, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, you know, and large patches. So it's a little bit different. But I think even a farmer could make make a farm aesthetically pleasing. I believe it's possible. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely it is possible. But I don't think that that's their desire. And they don't care to. I mean, it's a money-making venture for them. Absolutely. um, But, yeah, you know, as far as for people like us, like there's multiple ways to go about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you think so? Absolutely. There's everything. So I'm going to plain answer. Yes. There are multiple ways you can go about it. OK. So what what is one way that you could go about it? So this is a little bit of insight. If I get distracted and you ask me a question, I generally repeat the last couple of words of the question. I know. Um, as a way to pretend like I heard what you said. I know. Uh, so with that said, <laughs> <laughs> question, you know, you know, when you're doing um, like you know, in some debate, uh, can you have a question again, please? Uh, what is, wh- I, f- I forgot. Mm-hmm. No, what is the, um, like, what is one way that you think that somebody could do this? Like make their garden aesthetically pleasing? Oh, okay, yeah. So look, Completely that heard a, that for the first time. Softball. That was a softball. <laughs> Such a good question. Thank you, Mr. Gardner. Um, <laughs> so obviously, I believe that flowers can add a, an element of beauty to a vegetable garden. Um, obviously, I believe that flower gardens are beautiful because that's how I roll. Uh, but, you know, I think that may be a little bit more obvious. Um, You're so prob- biased. I know. Well, come on. <laughs> 
<laughs> I do think though, just um, and this isn't this is not related to my container <laughs> garden yeah. series. Not related to that at all because this is more about um, really nice pots and things. So um, and I have this design in my head, and I'm not. There's a whole story about why I can't pull it off, um, but designing around other elements in your yard or in your garden. So whether it's a fountain or whether it's a really pretty flower pot, Mm -hmm. um, you can add some pizzazz to it, if you will. Yeah, that was a softball answer, but I'll Mm -hmm. give it to you. Oh, listen now, you're not going to be evaluating my answers here. There's no grading system on this podcast. No, no, there is not. There is absolutely not. I think, um, you know, to get a little bit deeper into it, like, when you so plant, I didn't go deep enough, is what you're saying? No, you didn't go deep enough. Okay, we're like no. 10 minutes into it. Well, I know. These are building blocks. I'm trying right, to jump ahead. in. We're All jumping right. in today. Mm-hmm. We're going deep. I put my toes into the shallow water. It takes me like three minutes to get, you know, yeah. full body emerged. That's my I feel style. You. Mm-hmm. Now, I will agree, too, that um, flowers, They, I think they're good to put in your garden. But you, you want it to be a beneficial flower. Okay. I think that's the best case scenario, sure. Well, we're talking functionality and, and beauty here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, so would you put a rose bush in your in your middle of your vegetable garden? I would not, only because right. of the way that roses, though, the way they grow. I think it's total. So this is where we're not really talking about rules here. Yes, it's highly recommended if you're going to use a flower, use one that's beneficial to the garden. Um, right. However, I think that you absolutely can use something that you really, really love. Right. Because, again, it's all about this individual in their eye. Right. Right. But like for me, I put marigolds in the corners of my beds. Mm -hmm. They're beneficial. Right. Same here. So that's a good starting point. And it just gives you a splash of color. Okay, so and if you build off of that. So you're talking about a flower now, but you can do color combinations of flowers. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So if you had a marigold of a certain color, you could plant a vegetable, which flowers are a certain color with it. Sure, sure, sure. It's a really good point. But tell, go back and tell us why marigolds are beneficial. Um, this is a really common flower that's used with uh, vegetable gardening. I don't know why, to be honest. You tell them. I forget. So it's, yeah, it's said that the, the scent of marigolds deters some insects and things, yeah. but there's some people that say, oh, I'm not so sure if that's exactly accurate. It hasn't been peer reviewed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's the explanation around it. Well, there's another explanation, too, and I believe that it attracts certain insects that are beneficial to tomatoes and peppers. Mm, okay. I'll Google so, that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you should Google mm-hmm. the crap out of that. Everybody should for sure fact check me on that like (laughs) i could be just spouting off something but i believe Mm -hmm. recently i read something like that but i remember when i first started gardening that was just something i heard was like marigolds are beneficial to your garden Mm -hmm. and i just Mm -hmm. always went with it i just i really like the flower too though i do too Um, i I even like the smell of the flower it does have a distinct smell to point that out but yeah i don't know if i've ever smelled them i didn't think they would smell Mm -hmm. but yeah so you know adding a flower in there and then color combinations so like and to be honest i know we've talked about flowers in the past and foxglove is my favorite but really an eggplant flower i think is beautiful so my favorite and it's because it comes from the hibiscus family is the okra flower i just my i i'm not going to start weeping like that's the happy you know like gosh it's so beautiful i can't wait to see it this year but yeah 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 okra flowers are pretty Mm -hmm. Pretty up there, too, because they, they get big. Yeah. So yeah. you're talking about big splashes of color. But I think really what you want to go into is textures. Right. Because you're a texture guy, though. I am a texture guy, but mm-hmm. how much different in your planting can you do to make aesthetically? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it makes it makes a difference. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I'm sure that in my design kind of texture comes out, but I, I don't think I consciously say, OK, I'm looking for this different texture or I'm looking for complementary textures or whatever, you know. So when you put your garden together, what percentage of thought do you put into the aesthetics of your garden? The flower garden? No, vegetables. Oh, almost... I don't know, it's hard to say. I'd say um, 
I can't give you a percentage, but I can say the order, the way that I kind of order the design, right? So I'm, I'm gonna, not going to answer your question. I'm just going to give you some additional information that may or may not be helpful. Okay. Um, so so <laughs> I designed the garden based on um, what I plant things in open spaces that I don't have to worry about covering for pests. You know, so I, as an example, let's split the front yard and the backyard. I can do whatever I want in the backyard is in my mind. In the front yard, I'm now kind of particular. This is year two of it. So I will not plant kale again or collards in the front yard or even cabbage, which I think would look pretty cool because I have been covering those with some type of netting so that white moth doesn't attack it, right? Um, so I kind of go through that checklist in my head first. And then I start to get into, which is like, it's a deep, dark hole. What plants like each other and what plants don't like each other? So companion planting and things right. you should avoid planting together. And then lastly, I think it's about the aesthetic for me when it comes to vegetables. Yeah. For me, it's about 1%. Yeah. You know, it's not much, but this mm-hmm. year I kind of a little bit more kind of mm-hmm. made an effort to look mm-hmm. into it and make sure, you know, try and make sure that I was doing something a little bit bit more. But yeah, I don't put a whole lot of thought into it, but it's starting to change to me because, you know, and especially like this year, obviously I'm getting into flowers a little bit more, but as a, mm-hmm. a mostly a vegetable gardener, I look at it as, you know, how can I make this one space You know, because my vegetable garden is a room in my yard. Mm -hmm, How can mm -hmm. I make this one space a little bit nicer um, and more pleasing to the eye? And one thing that I really like is stuff climbing on trellises. Mm -hmm, I -hmm. really like it. Now that I have two trellises in the back of my garden, I feel like it gives that wall, that definitive wall. And that says, this is it. This is your garden. You know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. then when you get that color on there, I, I like it. You know, I think that adds a little bit to it. I'm looking away and I'm wondering if I need to revise my answer. Have, have we started grading this paper yet? Are we? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> Don't be no, a bell but, curve. Yeah, yeah. So the um, the trellis in my front yard, and that's where um, I have kind of the, the cow panels and creating the arch. Like it's love at first sight. Although it's a bit crooked, which if you see the idiot of the videos, now you got you'll all be looking for it. Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see it leaning. Um, so that absolutely was well. Uh, no, first it was about gr- growing horizontally, but it absolutely was. I like moved heaven and earth to get that trellis. Well. My uncle did because he drove like, you know, basically an hour both ways to go and pick it up. Um, So, yeah, there is a a little bit more, maybe more than one percent, but not higher than, you know, five or six or seven percent for me when it comes to um, designing the garden for design or designing the garden for a look. Right. But now that you have your strawberries and they're ever bearing, you're going to have this constant red color, right? Such a good, you know, that listening device. (laughs) That's implanted in my head. You're, it's what you're thinking. So I've been going here. Let's make this decision now. So I have um, a new strawberry patch, new in that I transplanted my strawberries to a smaller bed. They came out of like a seven by three foot bed, seven by four foot maybe. And I moved them to a four by four whole story around why that's not so much relevant Um, but I still have space in between the plantings the strawberry plants and so I was going through and saying what do I want to plant in between and I really even before maybe this topic came up I don't know I can't track my thoughts with our conversations now but I was saying what should I plant in between I could surely put lettuce there do I want green lettuce among the green leaves you know among the the strawberry flowers and the red strawberries or do I want to do something like chard you know like a rainbow chard or something you know of course I could do spinach but again it's kind of just green so I am absolutely with that bed gosh you're gonna make a liar out of me of this episode everything is gonna end up being out of (laughs) for aesthetics yeah yeah so now it's like you know 12 percent 12.5 percent <laughs> um, so, anywho, let's decide right now what I'm going to plant in the strawberry bed along with the strawberries. You should plant nothing with it. Oh, gosh. Audience, what are we going to? What's the decision <laughs> here? <laughs> Why nothing? Because they're going to take over the whole bed. 
That's what they say. That's the reason why I had them in a seven by four foot bed and it hasn't happened yet. Have you seen my, you seen my strawberry patch, right? I don't think so. I've seen the strawberries you've pulled out of it. I put pictures on, on, and they've been in the videos. Anyways, I started with four plants last year. I'll show mm-hmm. you, I'll take a picture and post it so everybody can see it. Mm-hmm. And it went from four plants to this and it's insane. It just, they spread and spread and spread yeah. and spread almost to the point of being invasive. Yeah, I actually would describe them as invasive. And mm-hmm. that's the reason why I put them in the large bed to begin with. And you said that you planted yours last year or this mm-hmm. year? Last, last year. year. See, and I don't know. I don't know what I did, but coming out of last year into this year, I don't know. Maybe if it's different in my climate, I'm not sure. But while I did see some runners, you know, and I was able to transplant some runners, they really didn't spread so much. Um, so we'll see. I'm thinking that. I was thinking about um, like lettuce, even lettuce that may bolt because I basically Mm -hmm. be pulling that lettuce up, finishing it out like in July or something. Mm -hmm. And so if these strawberry plants are going to like go buck wild, then again, they'll have that time to do it. Um, And maybe I can even do like, I think I have a red, ah, super red romaine lettuce. That'd be fun. Yeah. See? All right. You got it going on. Yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, is like you can do multiple things like that. And one thing that's a great anchor plant is like a sunflower. Like if you put a row of sunflowers in the back of your garden bed, just having that tall anchor and then building down and then have your, you could have your strawberries in the back in the front and then go a little bit higher. And let's say you did red bell peppers Mm -hmm. and then you would have, you know, Keep I don't know. Keep going, you know. And then in the very back, you would have you, your you sunflowers. Can do some, you know, yellow pepper, something that's going to turn yeah. yellow at some point. Yeah, you yeah, could do. You could do so much. Yeah. Well, you know what? I smile because um, the because you love new, sunflowers, and it's a new love. Like I thought they were weird all of these years. Like it's kind of freaky looking. Like you know the little bitty eyes which are actually the sunflower seeds kind of freaked me out that's a texture thing that made me a little bit uncomfortable but then I grew them on a whim because I was at you know a local nursery and they had them at like for I don't know maybe like eight plants or something starters um, like for a dollar or something I'm like why not because you know by that time in the season I'm just like I'm buying and planting everything and I planted them and like fell in love but you know what also fell in love with them what? Or who? Oh, the squirrels. Yeah. Of so, course they did. Um, it's sunflowers. Yeah. 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 I don't, so I said I don't like say, growing them because they're a pain in the ass. Because of the size? Because they fall over. Yeah. And, yeah. It is a little know. bit of work. There's definitely some staking, but that's the weird thing. So, you know, you haven't said it in a while, but we still believe you're the laziest of lazy gardeners. And I'm like right up there with you. There are just <laughs> some things that I don't deem like, you know, worth my garden time. But stuff like that, weirdly, like staking things up, I'm totally OK with that. Um, and that's not just something you do that one time either, especially with something, the larger sunflowers. Um, but anywho, I brought it up or the smile came up because the new cage baby, um, which is in my backyard. So it's a cage now that's built over three beds. Um, I was thinking to myself, it's still a little bit inconvenient. The beds are four feet wide and it's sitting up, um, right in front of a fence. So I technically can't get to the back of the bed. And so over the years I've maneuvered in different ways and I can get to like, you know, from this corner all the way to the middle of the bed, but there's some spots that are kind of blind to me. So I say, you know what I should do? I should just plant sunflowers on, not like mammoth or anything like that, on the back row. So that's something that's going to grow, right? And I won't have to worry about it so much. And then I thought like the cage is only six feet tall and I'd hate to have one. You're kind of hiding the beauty in this cage, although it's just a wood frame with wire. Uh, Then two, I thought, you know. Gosh, that's, they have deep roots. No matter the size, those roots can be pretty big if it's going to go four feet or higher. So anywho, I think I've squashed that idea. But I do like the idea of that layering tall, a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter, a little bit shorter, you know. Yeah. Now you got to hold that thought because we're going to come back to it. Remember. Oh, yeah. I'm totally like jumping ahead, aren't I? No, you're not. I just want you to you hold that thought. You brought up sunflowers, though. Yeah, I brought up sunflowers. write down the thought. I don't, my hands are full. I can't hold it. I'm writing it, I'm writing it down. So, Go you ahead. know colors and texture and then like when you when you talk about texture though especially in a spring garden you can get a lot of different textures going on 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, a lot of different lettuces and, you know, head lettuces, leaf lettuces, chards, all that stuff. So, you know, and then if you plant a couple of carrots, you can get that kind of texture in there and stuff like that. So the reason def- why. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you're good. I just said the reason why I like this topic so much is because there is a, a part, especially depending on what you're growing. There's a part of the garden that just looks like a green bush. You know, there's a time where everything just looks green, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and um, it kind of lacks interest, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously out of the gate, there's some things that will, um, you know, leaves or flowers that will grow, not flower flowers, but the flower on the vegetable that will be a different color very early on. Mm-hmm. But I, I think I've mentioned this before, the front yard garden, um, a lot of people would stop. And then, you know, as we chat, They'd be like, oh, wait, you're growing vegetables? So they just, I mean, I think they just thought they were a bunch of plants or something, yeah. you know, because from a distance, it just, again, looks like a bunch of green. Um, but I think it does give you an opportunity, like you're saying, in a spring garden to fold in some things that may have more lively colors. Um, well, and I one do, of the th- Go ahead. No, no, I'm going to, it's going to be a womp womp moment. So let's okay. save that for a little bit later. So I think, too, you know, I, I denounce, um, purple green beans a lot purple beans a lot purple green beans that sounds weird to say that mm-hmm. but you say know it what five I'm saying. times real fast burgundy beans yeah okay you know nice but then if, if you go through it and you look at it as a color scheme in your garden then there is a great opportunity to add some contrast into your into your garden absolutely you know even though when you cook it it's not purple and it's depressing as hell i'm letting you know but I think that's a cool part of it too, though. I don't. It's like, I think it's like it's, magic. It's like food magic. No, it's not. It's science, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, you know, those are different opportunities as well. And then you have like your different tomatoes, you know, you have like your black tomatoes and your purple mm-hmm. tomatoes and your orange tomatoes, s- orange yeah. tomatoes mm-hmm. and different squashes and all that stuff. Cause I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty certain they don't taste that much different. Yeah, unfortunately, you're right. Um, so, but wait, no, yeah. it's not unfortunate though, because now we know why they have those aesthetics. Oh, oh, and but there's also the whole eating of the rainbow, right? You know, so there's different nutritional value depending on the veggie, obviously, and then in some cases, you know, your darker hues have, you know different benefits from a nutritional value and i'm not going to be able to go into them because i don't know them that well um but i know like darker stuff like purple stuff is good for you like purple green beans but wait right. they don't stay purple that's Anywho, right um so let me I, wanted to, <laughs> I can't wait to grow them this year um so and i can't wait to highlight them in all of my videos and uh, shout out ben when i do no one thing to note though that's a, it's a really good example so i let's say that i plant um purple green beans and the ones I found so far I'm sure there are other ones do you want to know why every time I mention a vegetable I'm pulling out a package of seeds because you have a seed vault in your house and and this has officially become my toilet paper like this is a thing that clearly I'm just over buying and hoarding so Um, wait you wipe your ass with seeds if if it comes to it (laughs) god bless her (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or minimally the package once I've done I'm done sowing the seeds. Um, so the beans that I found, and I'm sure if I search, there are probably some pole beans that are purple. But the ones I found have been bush beans. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, from a height standpoint, I have the package here. It says um, it doesn't say height. Well, let's pretend it goes up like maybe a foot tall. It's like um, a, 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 I think they're like 10 to 14 inches. Yeah, maybe so. That sounds right. So 10 to 14 inches, we'll call it. Keep that in mind. And this is a thing that's a little bit harder when it comes to the design. Keep that in mind because what ended up happening to me last year is I planted my purple beans in a particular place. And once stuff started growing up around it, they were kind of hidden. So the leaves yeah. of this this particular um, variety are generally kind of green, more green than um Definitely. Maybe maybe hints of like purple, maybe hints of it. Um, But it's easy to one, miss them Um, Two, you get that beauty initially. But again, I had like Ford hook. I think it's I kept Ford giant. I don't know. It's some type of chart that kind of grows up really big. It's large. And I 
planted that around the beans. And at some point it was like, you know, where art thou? <laughs> you know? So yeah. keep that in mind if you really are focused on planting based on design for your well, you, garden. You brought a great segue up. And oh, that is wow. planting by height, different heights. So but that you, was two high fives. That was two, two high virtual fives. high fives. Yeah. So high you can, ten. High ten. So you can do different things too with that. So you can have like, I mean, you, I mean, the possibilities are endless. But if you go by plant sizes, then you could have a mound in the middle of your garden coming down. You could have a slope going up. You know, you can do a wave. I mean, you mm-hmm. can do a lot of crazy things with mm-hmm. it if you really put the effort into it. And the whole time is, and that's kind of building off of the texture as well, though, I think, you know, but, you know, you could do different designs and stuff like that. I know people are like, that's crazy. I don't even, I don't even know why I'm listening to that. But, you know, if you think about it and you really go and you, and you look at all these different seeds, because a lot of people plant the same things every year. Mm hmm. They and that's okay. That's, that's okay. I know. Mm-hmm. I'm guilty of mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I do the same thing. But, you know, over time, you can get eggplants that are different sizes, things mm-hmm. that are made for containers, different varieties that are made for containers will do just fine in your garden. Yeah. 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 And they're going to oh, be that's smaller. That's a really good point. Mm-hmm. So just because it says container friendly doesn't mean you need to shy away from it. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, just one thing to note, and it's not as big of an issue for flowers but for veggies just keep in mind um be wary of shading things out yes so height and even that wave you're talking about that's like it's reminiscent of interplanting which we haven't intentionally dived into just yet um and you know in a particular episode but um there's some things that it's a good thing when you shade it out you know like lettuce is a great example of that spinach is a great example of that right um but there are other things that you know in your design just kind of again keep in mind the uh, light requirements for those veggies and and what they're going to be look like once they're fully mature or at the point where you're ready to pull them out of your garden. I'm which is a whole you. thing I want to talk about. I'm going to correct you. Okay. Not necessarily light, but temperature. Oh, I think both. Both, but most vegetables require full sun. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's safe to say that when you're planting a garden, you need full sun. But... You've got your big, you know, eggplant, tomato plant, something mm-hmm. that grows tall. Mm-hmm. That's a perfect place to start your lettuce for the fall and let it shade it out and still create, you know, fill in gaps and stuff like that. And it'll keep it from getting hot so it doesn't bolt. I think that's what I said. Yeah. Like you can intentionally lettuce and spinach. Yeah. Like you, that's a but good But you were thing. referring yeah. to light and I'm talking about temperature. Mm-hmm. So. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. No, but I think those are two very separate things. And it's a really good point about um, temperature because that heat, man, you know, like it, it definitely is. Maybe I process shade in that same way. So it definitely keeps things a little bit cooler when it doesn't have that sun directly beating on it. So, yeah. Right. I'll accept the correction. Um Thank you. Because the papers still aren't being graded yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, yeah we're good. Clearly, we're taking this test together. Um, so. Yeah, we are one hundred percent cheating. <laughs> no, so, no, this is like this is like grab a friend, right? Yeah. <laughs> so when you go through and you and you think about it, though, there's more that you can do to design a bed of vegetables that you can do. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. using vine, vine potatoes pepper or not peppers Mm -hmm. melons um winter squashes stuff like that to kind of feed in and also keep the soil cool beneath your tomatoes Mm -hmm. you could use a if you have a pretty big space and i say this and i don't i I really can't tell you what pretty big is but you'll be able to tell me for um zucchini as a good example so those that a single plant could get pretty wide if you don't prune it right but you could use that as a centerpiece if you yes. will yes, you, you know can. Um, yes, and you then can. plant around it you or know, a giant so. kale mm-hmm. yeah 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 there's um what is it called the dinosaur kale that gets big but i think it's like a walking stick kale or something I don't know. It's supposed to get super duper tall. Am I making it up? New no, variety. Go through your um, seed vault and find <laughs> <Yeah>. the pack. 
<laughs> so the end of the world's coming and Batavia has all the seeds for humanity in her house. Just so it you know. It absolutely is walking stick kale and it has an average of six to 12 feet um, per the internet. This is on um, www.rearseeds.com. Not a sponsor yet, but, uh, but yeah, I've seen this on television, television on probably some YouTube video or something before. Um, and YouTube this is, I'm television. sure. Yeah. I'm sure it's probably for climates that, um, allow that kale to grow every year, but that's again off topic. But yeah, something it looks like a tree at six feet tall, you know, at ten Okra. feet tall or whatever. That's a part of my design this year yeah. as a part of the challenge. Are we keeping track of the things you're challenging me to do? We yeah, need for our, our, the podcast no. log. We need to we need to track that, and or someone needs to keep us honest. Like you hear an episode, Ben challenges me to do something, and then it's like two months later you haven't heard about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, the fall is going to be riddled with like <laughs> updates and like outcomes and grades. And there's probably going to be some arguing and there's going to be some crying. It's going to uh-huh. be I mean, it's going to be a soap opera up in this yeah. piece come, yeah. Yeah. come fall and winter. But, but the challenge was to add um, and it's impossible at this stage for me to remember which episode. And it doesn't really matter. An episode we talked about um, edible landscaping. Oh, there it is. Okay. Edible landscaping, one of Ben's favorite episodes. Um, and uh, we talked where about. I, no, wait. Hmm? Where I turned Batavia. I was like a garden <laughs> zombie, right? You know, <laughs> my eyes were bloodshot red. I was, you know, I was one of those fast walking zombies, though. Um, yeah. So I was turned just as a spoiler. I don't know the airing time of these. But anywho, the challenge was to fold in and incorporate a vegetable, something edible specifically. Um, so not necessarily a vegetable, but something edible into my flower bed. I have a street side flower bed, which mo- I mean, that's really the only place I'm planting flowers in ground. Most of the rest of my flowers are in pots. And so I accepted the challenge and we already eliminated some flowers while I can plant them. That's not, that can't be my right. response to the challenge, but I did select okra. One, it's a great space to grow it. You know, it's full sun. It's the most sun my yard is going to get. And I'm envisioning it like you described it before, like as a centerpiece, as the the um, almost like not necessarily a hedge, but kind of a circular design of okra in the center. And then everything else kind of is lower and viewing when in that particular bed. So I'm picturing and if they live because they are going to live, my uh, seed starts for okra. I have a burgundy okra. How do you feel about burgundy okra? The same. Okay. So I have a burgundy okra and I can imagine the okra um, pods and the flowers. I'm just, I'm getting excited now. Dude, you can, you can literally watch the flowers bloom before your eyes it's a, and turn it's... into okra every day. You could sit outside in your garden all day and watch five okra go from f- flower to fruit to harvest almost in one day. You think it's garden magic or do you think it's science? I think my vote is garden magic. I mean, it's magic. obviously science, but it's definitely magic to watch that happen. I mean, it's, I, it's I majestical. hear that as, so you said science, but I think I heard that as garden magic. Like yeah. that's a translation like yeah, for me. Yeah, it is. I mean, on okra, it really is. It's, yeah. it's amazing. It is the most amazing vegetable you can grow. I think so. I mean, I know that a lot of people don't like it from a texture perspective. Real quick tangent on that the first year that I grew okra I had um, some I had a guy working on something here and it was my first time growing it no no second year first year I grew it I didn't know when to pick it so I just kept on watching it because you know in the stores you can get some huge okra I kept on watching it kept on watching it then I realized oh that's tough you know, they gotta so be I, like pinky size. Yeah, so I, I let it get too big, and then the next year I was conscious of it. So I had a guy working here, and he's like, you know, that okra's ready to be picked now. And I'm like, you know, there's always someone that's gonna tell you what to do in your garden, right? And so I'm like, no, it's fine. And so he's like, it's gonna be too big in the morning. And I'm just like, damn it. Sure enough, too big in the morning. And that's when I learned the lesson of like literally grows overnight. You wanna you hear my, my first um, experience with my okra? Mm hmm. I grew, I grew, I grew up eating fried okra, mm-hmm. and so I grew it. And I was like, you know what? I'm fixing to steam this. Man, it was a big old bowl of snot. It was disgusting. I love snotty okra. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. 
but there's so many other ways to cook it. Like yeah. I like to put yeah. it in soups and stuff like that. Yeah, it is definitely a thickener for soups. I actually, um, I discovered a recipe. No, I'm joking. Um, so I did roast it. No, 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 no. No, are we? You, no, it's my turn it. to oh, give okay. out the recipe and you're okay. not stealing it today. Okay. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> you don't get a freebie. That doesn't work that you way. You know what? I was saying it and I thought, dang it, I'm spending my, you know, recipe you're, on this talk. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's pull it back. Let's pull it back. Garden no, let's design. not. Let's okay. um, let's do this. I think we've covered basically vegetable garden design. Okay, I think we're good. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of this. Do you see my posture? Do you see how I'm like leaning into the microphone, leading into yeah. uh, the video here? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just so you know. so. Let me tell you how I screwed up already and haven't even started yet. So I have a big fire pit in the middle of my yard. Mm-hmm. Or not a bit. The fire pit itself is small, but I made a seating area around it, and I had this brilliant idea. I'm gonna make it a hexagon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, which is nice as is, but then yeah. we start looking at it. And we're like, you know what? It's a room. You know, again, we're going back to the room thing. Sure. It's a room uh-huh. in your yard. We want to make it so it is more enclosed, but there's more to look at around it. Mm-hmm. So that being said. I'm limiting myself to where I'm not redesigning the actual seating area, which is the issue that I'm having Mm -hmm. is if I build a border garden around it. And when I say a border garden, I'm not going to put junipers in there and some monkey grass or, you know, what is it called? Loriope, I think is a technical term for it. You know, you're not not. go on. No, that's not going to happen. Okay. so we're looking at it and we're like, how how do we do this? And I've been researching, researching, you know, garden design because this is all new to me. And I and this is where we're going to go back to the heights. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I did my shade garden and I tried to do it by height. So the biggest thing in the back kind of coming back, you know, forward, kind of like a slope. Mm -hmm. And then I realized during this process that I'm not completely happy because I don't want it to be like a, just a, a gentle slope down. I want it Mm -hmm. to be staggered throughout. So we're going through and it's like, I want to do perennials I want it to be ultra drought tolerant to Mm -hmm. an extent. But what we also want is we want it to be spring flowering and fall flowering because those are the two seasons that we're going to be out there sitting in it just to make it just a little bit more complicated. Mm Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm I'm glad you realized. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. So then you go through and we start talking about it and, I, I want everybody like I don't know how much landscaping people have done around their yards and stuff like that, but it's literally the most expensive thing you can do to your house. Is you think? Yes, you can rip out an entire wall. Oh, okay, and yeah. like re- put a bar in cheaper than you can like landscape your yard. You know, mm, you can do a lot of things for less money inside of your house. And you, as you know, and everybody listening to this knows. Buying plants is a habit. You don't stop all year. It's It can get out of hand, right? Oh, you know I know. Yeah. And I, I wrap I'm my arms around it. I'm looking at you like it. laser Listen, beams through you. I, I wrap my arms around it and I embrace it and I cuddle with it. Right. I accept it. And so what really set this off is, as you know, and everybody listening, is I have problems growing grass in my yard because it's hard for me to water it. It's mm-hmm. it's really what it is. It's hard for me to justify watering grass. Oh, OK. 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 Now we get to the truth. Oh, yeah. That's not I mean, that's not a lie. I, mm-hmm. I think watering. I mean, I think golf courses are the biggest waste of resources on the planet. They're mm-hmm. ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even though the game may be fun for some people, I think it's just a waste of water. But that being said, you come through and now we're, we're looking at it and we have this hexagon, right? And as you walk off my back porch, there's the first flat edge. So we want to leave that you. open, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? So you can just have a nice walkway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then what do you do? Do you enclose it completely on your garden design? So this is a really good problem to have because... Um, the I love, 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 even going back to vegetables, I love the idea of a sitting area in the garden. Um, so let's let's 
put that in this parking lot that, as they say in business. Um, so I think that um, one of the mistakes we often make is we try to fill things up, fill it, fill it, fill it. I think you leave it open because I think you really want to be able to maneuver as n- real, that's really natural. So once you start loading that stuff in and kind of blocking that in, you see what I'm doing with my hands? Yeah, you block then, it I mean, off like a wall. Yeah, then you, you're you like walking the long way to get back to your porch, you know? Like you walk into it and then the thing is, is like, you'll feel like you're totally enclosed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, is that yeah. a good thing or is that a bad thing? And we're, we're referring to like a fire pit area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have to think about that. And then the other problem we have is like, okay, it's a hexagon shape. Mm-hmm. Do you make the border around it? Just extend it by a couple feet and make it an additional hexagon around it. You know what I'm saying? So or you can't, cause in my mind, you can't combine straight edges with curved, curved edges. Uh, See, I'm not at all that literal with design. I think that you close off whatever your back is to. So I assume that the either you're on an angle where you can see your home or you're um, looking straight on to your home. Right. So I would think that from your back porch to where the fire pit is where the hexagon is um that would be completely completely open yes. right you know so i'm thinking you know bringing out you know lemonade bringing out you know a bite to eat like you want to kind of have a clean shot there yeah but you don't I want do, a little pathway yeah yeah exactly exactly right so i do think though um for those that envision my terrible description of this i'm moving my finger around that back side of that hexagon is what's blocked off i think because if i remember the property isn't that wouldn't the woods be behind you the garden and the woods are behind it so then that's my next problem is do Mm -hmm. i want to cover up the garden so i don't see it if i'm sitting out there oh oh i thought i i felt like i was merging the two so the fire pit is in front of the garden yeah it's like 20 or 30 feet in front of the garden Oh, oh. See what I'm saying? So then you have that aspect. So like this is all part of garden design that you think you have to think about. See, I don't think you could. I I don't think you. I I take back. I retract my answer. Um, You can't close it off like the idea. I mean, so let me. All right. All right. All right. right, right, Okay. Retake. So there's a part when the garden is lush and beautiful that you absolutely want to see. But for me, there's a part where the garden goes wild. Remember I said my grandmother says, let it run yeah. wild and things start to die off and it yeah. it, it ain't looking the best. You yeah. know? So um, then I don't know if it, it would be kind of nice to to have that closed off. That's an interesting dilemma. Right. I think you need to do some some footage of this. There's I mean, yeah, well, there's it's coming. I mean, this whole yeah. process is going to be very well documented. Mm hmm. But we want to, you know, these are all things that one has to think about when you're landscaping, you know. And when I say landscaping, you're building a bed or I'm not talking about putting grass like I don't care mm-hmm, about that. Mm-hmm. We don't even talk about grass on here mm-hmm. other than you shouldn't have it to cut it. Mm-mm, no, but um, and I we're s- absolutely com- anti-grass. No, yeah. I mean, no, it, it's fine. We're I'm not anti-grass. It, but, I'm not yeah. anti-grass, but I am I am anti as much grass. And that's another reason for doing this is it eats up more of my yard that I don't have to cut. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, I'm not anti grass either. I don't have any grass. I have like maybe a small patch that's maybe, you know, five feet by like two feet. And it's one of the because the yard is basically connected, connected. So it could look like my neighbor's grass because I dug up everything else. Right. Um, Excuse me. I think it's odd, though, when people if you're cutting grass at all, unless you have a huge lot, you're cutting grass. Right. You know, so I've in this home, I never had a backyard grass. So it was only the small spot in the front yard. So it didn't matter if it was for the small lot that size or twice the size or even three times the size. In my mind, you're pushing the, the lawnmower. I didn't pick up, um, dig up my grass because I didn't want to cut it. I dug it up because I wanted to grow more food. Right. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't get it, but yeah, I hear it often. And I don't want to grow food in this area yeah. at all. So it's going to be the only place that I don't grow food. There were something's growing. And, and good for you for like really calling that and making that kind of one of yeah. the principles of the area. I do want to, um, I really want to drive the point home of enjoying the space that you're building. Yes. And building it, designing it for the purpose of enjoying it. Yes. Um, That's it, the holdup. That's the whole yeah. holdup. And you know, you want to know something interesting? 
So my wife does not do anything in the garden other than weed. Like my job is to grow it, build it, take care of it, everything. And she washes it and cans it. Yeah. And she that, kills what needs to be killed, i.e. weeds. But yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And then we were we were going on our afternoon walk the other day and she was like, I was like, what do you want to do out there? And she was like, I want spring and fall blooms. And I was like, son of a bitch. I wanted to come up with that. <laughs> Don't you love how poetic that is? Yeah. I was like, you're killing me here. That's my job. Why did I think of this? I'm proud of you for giving her credit for it. Oh, dude. 100%. Yeah, so that's actually, um, it totally goes into the design. Um, And like bloom time for flowers, that's probably, I believe, I believe the first mistake that we make um, as new flower growers is getting a flower that wants sun and putting it in the shade, which isn't the end of the world, but more specifically getting a flower that wants shade and putting it in the sun. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably the number one mistake that, um, you know, flower buyers make, right. Flower planters, gardeners with flowers. Um, I think that the other mistake, and it's so easy to do, um, lilies, which are in my top 10 favorite, it's closer to number one, but I, I can't, I don't want to misquote myself. Uh, so they're in my top 10. The, is it aesthetic? Aest- 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 what is, how does it pronounce? The ones that grow, that grow up kind of um, straight. And anyway, the, they only bloom for a period of time in the, um, in the season. And I yeah. didn't know that. And I love them. Uh, so not the day lilies that kind of spread all over the place, not those, but I love them. So, and when I first bought them, I didn't know enough going back some years to like really read the tags. It sounds silly. Like I didn't realize I had to read the information they were giving me, right. but I didn't. So I planted them and I'm just like, Oh, one, one, I bought them that and they were already bloomed. Damn it. Huge mistake with this particular flower. We talked about this previously about it's not necessarily recommended to do that in general, but huge mistake. So I didn't realize the clock was already ticking, planted it, was admiring my handiwork. It was in a little bitty bed. I had the hardest time even planting them because underneath the soil was so many bricks from when the, the home was built, yada, yada, yada. Finally got them in the ground. I would go to work in the morning and look at them. I would come home and look at them and then like, Three weeks later, gone. Yeah, crushed. bloom time is a real thing. Crushed, and you and it's not you can't fake bloom time. Mm-mm. Nope, there's it no way happens, to cheat that. No, yeah. it happens when it happens, and you have mm-hmm. to take that into account. And so, like what we're talking about doing, so you have to think in my climate, early spring all the way until you know early spring to about mid spring is fire pit season, mm-hmm. and then it's really mid to late fall to winter Mm -hmm. here Mm -hmm. so you know and i definitely so we're we're thinking like like crocuses because my wife loves crocuses i've never heard of crocuses crocuses they poke up through the snow like you should have them in your yard um (gasps) they're beautiful yeah they're purple white yellow orange whatever you want but purple is the natural color i believe i have seen them they kind of put you in the mind of tulips yeah, but they're like four inches tall. But yeah, they will poke up yeah, through the like snow. Almost like ground cover, yeah. So what we did, and this, so when I, remember when I told you that my wife doesn't do the gardening? Uh-huh. She goes, yeah, I planted some um, crocus bulbs. And I was like, okay. And then um, they they pop up and they're not crocuses. <laughs> 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 they're, how do you say it? Hycanthus? Okay, Hycanthus. okay. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. So um, anyway, so I want to put crocuses out for her because she loves them. Yeah. And so they're real low. So you'll get that early spring and then late fall. You can, you know, I had something else picked out. I don't know what it was, but, you know, we really want to focus around perennials and stuff like that because Mm -hmm. we want it to be low maintenance. I don't really want to be putting stuff in that section. I want to do it one time and one time only. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and we're thinking about anchoring the back of it with like a large bush and so the the question comes is how big do you want this bush to be, mm-hmm. right? And you want but you this, can always prune a bush though. You can, but I would rather oh, not be gardener. pruning. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. no, not necessarily. Like if the bush, like if I saw a bush and it, I was like, oh, I like that. It grows twelve feet tall. Oh wow! Yeah. Like I'm not gonna cut two thirds yeah. of it off. That's not good for this like is evergreen to, level bush. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have to be careful with that. And the other thing too 
is I don't necessarily want it to be like pure flowers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I want something. That's a texture thing too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it is a texture thing, but I feel like you need a break from the color. Like it would get so intense at times. So the level of happy that I would be in uh, with all that color. So um, I I think so. We talk about bloom time being so serious and it's easy. Right. You know, so if you're buying them in any most any big box store and then a bunch of nurseries and if they don't have it tagged, just ask someone like they're going to either say spring, you know, summer. Um, if it's what, uh, mums or something, it's going to say fall or it's going to say like spring to summer or spring to fall. Like it's going to be tagged. So you'll know. Yeah. Um, so once you fall in love with, and I fallen in love with flowers at, you know, a store and just said, I just, I can't just, you know, I can't justify it in my garden, in my space for this dollar amount. I mean, it's only going to be spring. I actually bought and didn't get a chance to plant them. And I'm hoping if you guys know, cause I don't have a lot of experience with planting bulbs, I'm hoping that I can hold out and plant the bulbs I bought last winter this fall, basically. Yes. So I've as long as you keep them cool. Back and forth. Yeah. Okay. So they're in my what basement in the closet. Um, I got tulips. And let me tell you, I love them. I've never planted them. And you know why? It's the same thing with that lily, you know, so they look great until they don't. And they start drooping downtown Chicago. Um, they, you know, they obviously pull those plants out and flowers out over the season. So, you know, it's spring in downtown Chicago when those tulips come up on Michigan Avenue and it's the most beautiful sight. And then like two weeks later, you're walking. And it's just like, whoa, they're all wobbly. And yeah, like, they piss um, me off. Yeah, so, and but they have a whole crew, obviously, you know, all of our tax dollars, and they pull that stuff up and put something else in. So that's not, I don't have that kind of space, time, or really money. So I, that's why I never made the leap for tulips. Um, I actually was going to try tulips in containers, and I may still do that, um, because I am like you in that I love annuals. That's not like you, but I do want to continue to invest in perennials. Yeah. Right. I do want to forget what I what's in the ground and then come out one morning. And it's like, oh, hey, there's a little flower bud waving at me like uh, that makes me happy. Because what um, is a perennial? It's your good it's old your pal. your best friend. Yeah. yeah, it is, too. If you think about it, like, I mean, I don't know. It's something to be said because you go out. So here's the deal with annuals. And this is why I don't want to put them in that garden space in that bed is because you go out, you get your annuals and they're teeny weeny you know, plants and then all summer they grow. But until that time, and this is going to be the key time that we're going to be using this area. They're not going to be look, they're not going to look like anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just kind of sad. Another note for, go ahead. Another note for annuals though. And this isn't even about being a lazy gardener. This is just being realistic when it comes to maintenance for most perennials, while some perennials, it's recommended that you cut them back at the end of the season. Some it's recommended you leave them be. Um, but annuals, at some point, it's a dead plant that's not going to return. And either you're pulling it up at the end of the season or you're pulling it up next spring. Right. You know, so there is a little bit more maintenance to those, obviously. Um, so it that's, is. again, something that, not necessarily for design, but something to consider when it comes to what you're going to make your investment in. Yeah, now, so like... Investing your time, right? So we plan to buy our plants at the end of the year Mm -hmm. when everything goes on 50% off. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go in there and we're going to have a clear idea of what we want and we're going to walk out with something totally different based on what they have. (laughs) And that's just how it works every single time. Yeah. yeah. So there is one bush, I believe it was called the Bella Soul or something like that. Okay. And it blooms um, late summer... All the way through the fall. Mm -hmm, And it mm -hmm. has orange blooms on it. The only problem is, is you can only get them in like two places in my state. Oh, okay. So I'm probably going to have to make a road trip because I'm pretty much sold on it. Because you have to remember too, if you're going to have fall blooms, you want fall colors. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a really good design tip. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to want colors to the, for the season. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what's another thing that's good? What is neutral in your garden? What is a neutral color? Burgundy in my garden. No. A green. And? I don't know. Stop white. Feed me the answer. Oh, okay. I thought white, but I didn't want to get another answer wrong. Goodness. <laughs> and, like, I you know, the pressure. 
<laughs> green and white are your neutral colors. Mm -hmm. So if you start going crazy with everything, you know that, hey, I, and you want another flower, you can put a white flower in there mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's okay. And there's gardens that have nothing but white flowers and they look really good. Yeah. I believe it's... um, like Cottage gardens are often designed with either white flowers or very light kind of pastel flowers. I thought they were purple and pink with white. I mean, they're definitely not reds and yellows. No, right? no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think cottages are like purples and whites and, you know, your basic colors. Because you can get mm -hmm. some crazy colors. But um, one thing it's hard to get is blue. Yeah, we've learned that, right? Yeah, yeah, I've learned that. So be <laughs> careful when you're going out and you're like, oh, I want blue flowers. Like, you're going to, you know, it's going to be hard to get them. So let me ask you, for flower designs, um, and what catches your eye, I'll even... Um, leave that opening do you like kind of a cluster of a color or do you like to intermingle your colors um you know what I, to be honest I don't have the experience quite yet with flowers but I believe what's pleasing to my eye is clusters of colors mm -hmm. like a solid color mm -hmm. you know what I mean or um I really like well my favorite contrasting color combination is orange and blue but as we stated, blue is a very hard color. Oh, you to mean get. in life, not necessarily in, in flowers. Yeah, in so life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, that's going to be a hard one to do. So that's another mm -hmm. thing too, is because you're limited. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, now if you go online, you can go crazy, but you're also going to pay to go crazy. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And we're not. I would venture to say that most of the listeners have a limited budget. Mm -hmm. As and, do we. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and it's good. It's important to have a limited budget, though, I think, because it really it holds you grounded. So you don't go freaking psycho buying <laughs> stuff that you really have no business buying, you know, because and if, and buying stuff that you uh, may or may not have room or time to actually plant. There's nothing sadder. And we this is goes back. This is a throwback episode. Do we have throwback episodes already? You and I together? Sure. Okay, so I uh, have a throwback episode where um, it was one of the things that we were going to do different or something. I previously, years back, would buy plants and flowers, so veggies and flowers, buy transplants slash starter plants. And they'd sit on, like, they'd sit right by the garage where I unloaded them from my car or they'd sit on the porch, you know, because I completely went wild, you know, went at the store, got everything home and just really wasn't ready to plant. You know, and so there is nothing sadder than seeing little plants not getting the attention that they normally get in the store. They're not getting that attention from you. They're not in the ground. And then those little plants become, you know, a thing of the past as they yeah. wilt and die. And that's the I thing. I just, I, went, I just went garden dark there as they did, wilt and die. <laughs> but I haven't done that yet. I have yeah, not yeah. bought a single plant and left it out for more than 24 hours like I said I would. Good for you. Yeah. For you. So, you know, nothing is wasted at this point. Now, if it doesn't make it afterwards, I can't help you there. But, yeah. you know, that's a different story. But, I mean, you, you got to think about all those things. So, what I was saying is you can order stuff online, but if you get it at your local nursery, mm -hmm. more than likely, unless it's clearly stated, you're going to buy something that's going to live in your area. Huge, right? huge, huge. So, let's, I want to talk about that just for a second across all planting so whether it's a bush that you're ordering or buying online whether it's a fruit plant whether it's a tree whether it's a flower whether it's a vegetable that rule that generally speaking the rule that you talked about if it's at a store in your area it's likely to grow in your area be very careful and, and even you know we talk about youtube videos our channels and others be very careful in chicago i have to be careful about watching what someone's doing in california yes and thinking that i can replicate this you know planting this plant and growing yes. this vegetable or whatever have you um with a little bit of you know um work you know and research you can grow a lot of things that other people who can grow, you know, across the U.S. and in other countries. But there's some things that are made based on that climate and they flourish in that climate. I can't, for my area, plant an avocado tree. No. Like, it's just, it's not going to happen, right? Same you know, here. So, so, yeah, I mean, again, just, um, it's a good tip um, when you're ordering online. Sometimes they, and I keep on dancing, I keep on trying to pull you into this conversation. Sometimes they note now online the zone it's for. When you're ordering flowers and seeds and stuff online, so some that's places a guide won't even you. send it to you. 
Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. Some places won't even send them to you. So, which is good that they do that. But, I mean, on the other hand, like, you don't know if somebody has a greenhouse and they want to grow it. Like, you know, that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but well, it's I, easy. I've not seen them not sending them to you, but I have seen them, like, not sending them to you until a certain date. We talked yes. about that with sweet potato slips. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's a definite thing, too. Mm-hmm. But you have to be careful, too, because, you know, you can look at a flower and be like, I really want that. And then you get it. And I mean, let's be honest. Are you planting all during spring? You're you're going to be consistently planting something yeah. throughout the year. You know what I mean? So well, I am, and maybe you are. Some people want to kind of be one and done, like put it all right. out and look at it. That's what um, I want to be. Do, I don't do want to. I don't want to do it all the time. I get so I have mixed feelings about it because I love to sit back and look at when things are like about to start taking off and it's in the maintenance mode. But I love digging in dirt. You know, so I love I get putting tired something of it. I mean, you know, after planting all your beds and now yeah. the flowers and stuff, it's like, OK, yeah. because then I have to take care of it. And once you plant it, you have to water it consistently mm-hmm, mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. like two weeks in order to yeah. get it settled. And so that's the thing. You know, that's the hard part. So anyways, we kind of went off topic a little bit. Oh, it's all related. It is all related. <laughs> so back to the garden design, though, like in this space that I have, what would you do? You got an Gosh, octagon think, bed, yeah, or an octagon shape. Room, would you, yeah, yeah? So how would you go around just edging out the bed on the outside, making the actual bed? Like, what shape would you think you would do? So I want to say that it would be circular of sorts and creating that hedge, but then again, I feel like maybe that starts to feel too enclosed. Um, how far across from one point to another do you think it is? I believe it's about ten feet across. Okay, yeah. So that's kind of small. All things considered. Yeah. So if you um, block it in, it's going to be tight. Yeah. Yeah. So are you thinking of you're doing containers or are you thinking planting in ground? No containers. Yeah. Because it's too hot there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I would, I can't, I might put a container in there, but that's not going to be the like, mm-hmm. the whole that's thing. That's not going to be the, like the design. Right. Yeah. Um, so I definitely, I'd probably do kind of the edges of the, uh, the hexagon. So leaving the leaving a clear view and even walkway to the garden and then leaving a, cause I'm kind of picturing it house, um, fire pit area, like almost a straight shot and then garden. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So I would basically on the, um, if the garden is South and North, if the garden is South, the house is North. It doesn't matter if it's not. And then the West and East sides are where I would put like my plantings. So it almost be like um, a half moon, if you will. Um, so I do like the higher things there. So the back um, edge has to have something in it because that's the worst spot for the grass to fill in. Now you're just dropping the, but I forgot to tell you about this huge problem that's going to screw up your design, Batavia. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, like I said, I, w- I was thinking about all the way around, but what I'm mm-hmm. referring to is like, you know, the different heights, which is a huge part of this. Yeah. Yeah. Is, you know, staggering the heights of plants and stuff like that. Like, I, I feel, feel like, like it's the slope, like you described. I feel like so? it has to be closest to the sitting area, sh- small ground cover, shrubbery, you know, even flowers are fine. Mm-hmm. And then there's some gradual, maybe two. Three layers, if you will, as far as different heights, for sure. You could decide if you have space to go much, like if there's much more depth to go, kind of like four or five. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't think that it's just a straight wall, because I don't think that's as interesting for that space. No. Like just one height. I do think you want to play around with the heights. With a wave, well, first off, you, you said it was 10 feet, right? You know, So if it's 10 feet across, that's not a whole lot of planting space and sitting space. Or are you saying that it's 10 feet across for sitting area and then you can plant starting at the 10 foot mark as far back as you want? No, 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 no. I mean, I have to make so the stuff, the space right now is 10 feet across, Mm -hmm. but then I want to add on to that. Oh, okay. 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 You want to make it larger across. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we're not changing the actual structure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're just adding onto the edge of it. You know what I mean? So Makes if sense? you're sitting, if you're sitting straight across from each other, chair to chair, how far do, uh, across does that go? I don't know. You're asking me questions that I can't even begin to answer. Well, I mean, are you are you really serious about this design or not so much? No, I'm joking. I'm oh, joking. here we go. Wow, she had a dead serious look. 
<laughs> totally joking. No. no, but I mean, I think those are those are things that obviously it's easier for you to stand in the area and figure those pieces out, you know, versus yeah. us talking about them. And we'll we'll just do like a video and we can like, you know, as you stand out there, we can talk about that piece. But I like the idea of the wave piece from a you're sitting in a chair chilling out and you can see kind of literally a wave but yeah. you're going to miss the flowers are kind of in that middle of that wave walking right. up to it it looks good um and it feels kind of sterile even to talk about it, like a stepping stone a stepping tier like we were talking about um but yeah. i think that as you sit back if, so the question becomes you know in addition to wanting um summer what no spring she said and um, fall. fall blooms you also want to be able to or ask the question from which eyes of you do you want to enjoy this the most exactly yeah so. that's the key question so you know these are all parts that you need to ask yourself before you take on a project like this like i mean i would imagine so like when i do something like this i don't really do it for myself i do it for her mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so you know, I'm imagining that she wants to see it inside of it. Yeah. But, you know, also on the outside in the summertime, you want to look at it, too. Because, I mean, literally in the summertime, there's I mean, why do you want to have a fire when it's 98 degrees yes, outside? Yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can't think of anything worse than sitting around a fire when it's that hot. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. So, but, but, I mean, um, it's still a nice seating area, too, though, no? Is it a nice seating area? Yeah. Like, even if I it mean, was... It's, a, it's gravel. Oh, you know, okay, I, yeah, I yeah. carved it out and put gravel in it, so okay. it's... It's not like it's like fantastic, but we don't care about that. I mean, it's a functional piece. Mm-hmm. Like we use it to like burn scrap, mm-hmm. you know, stuff when we weed and stuff like that. If we don't feed it to the chickens, we we burn it and, you know, wood and stuff like that. And So do you, know, you all sit ever up- sit there in the middle of the summer? Or no. Not really. So the reason why I like that so much, I mean, not that you're not sitting there in the middle of the summer, but that actually allows you, like you talked about, like, that's the reason why she says spring blooms and fall blooms, right? Right. You know, so, but it does give you the opportunity to plant things that, and and I think what she may be saying, and you tell me if this is how you interpreted it, a set of spring blooms and then something that looks different in the fall, not necessarily something that blooms all season. Which way did you understand no 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 yeah she doesn't care if anything blooms in the summertime Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah which i don't really either but i also think that at some point like yeah it'll be nice to see something in the summertime Mm -hmm, you know what i mean mm -hmm, as you walk mm -hmm. around outside it and stuff like that but i just my biggest setback is and you know building a seating area is it is a lot harder i've come to realize than actually building a flower bed on like this a corner of your yard or something yeah because yeah. you got to get that space right mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. and i did a lot of i, I looked up in a lot of places and it, it seemed to me like a lot of people build like on one edge of it to kind of look so, off in the distance at it well no like you know you have like you'll have like half of it open mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then there's be like one edge that would just kind of like seal it off completely mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so i don't really know how to go about that but i mean these are all things and i mean that's why we're not like jumping into it sure. now we're gonna take our time and figure it out because you know funds are limited mm-hmm. and time is limited quite frankly and to be completely honest, I'm kind of done digging for now. <laughs> so, so remember I need I, a break. Remember when I said that um, there, I, I, um, I really enjoy planting and being in dirt all year long. There is yeah. definitely a time of the year, the season where I'm not like, I don't want to dig shovel wise. Like I don't want to kind of break ground again. I, I want to, I want to be able to take my hand and dig a hole if I can, I can like, Oh, I saw this super cool thing and I'm just going to buy it and plop it in my garden. So I definitely get that. Um, I think though, like what comes first, the seating area or the flower design, right? or the flower right. design or the seating area. And I think either way it's, and if you do them both at the same time, it's still kind of hard, right? So you already have the seating area there and you, again, you don't want to change that. That makes sense. So you're designing around it essentially. Well, a smart man would have done it all at once. Well, I mean, again, that's smart. But and that's then what's me. just feasible, right? You yeah. know, we talk a lot about kind of building year by year. So we do, we do. That's something that's naturally happening. I really want a area in the front yard that I can sit. And um, the most recent bed that I built, 
um, which is now bed number one again. So I really considered like building a bench there and being able to kind of sit there and chill. But then I really realized that, you know, there's going to be a point where that's pretty warm. You know, that's pretty a lot of sun there. So I said, okay, you know, I can just pull out a chair if I want and kind of sit because the reality is I do have a nice deck area in the back, you know, so it's every area doesn't have to kind of, you know, duplicate the function. Right. The front yard has a function and it's not necessarily kind of sitting and chilling out like that's I have the backyard for that, you know, so. Yeah. But I mean, you also want to sit out in your front yard and enjoy what you grow other than walking from your car to your front door. Well, you know, I do a uh, morning walk um, different from your walk, like you're doing miles. I'm just walking around the, the property from the front and backyard. And sometimes I'll just stop and sit on the porch for a minute, you know. Um, yeah. And again, I have a folding chair that, you know, you know, the lawn chairs or whatever that, you know, I can sit in a particular corner now, especially when it's kind of now in spring and it's cool heading into summer. Um, even if it's sunny it's still like a really nice view um yeah so and it also gives me a chance to socialize garden wise a bit you know so as passers-by come by um mostly last year i was doing work when i chatted with people but now you know there's going to be less work to do this year for that front yard and more kind of marveling at those okra flowers (laughs) yeah and i mean you know my grandfather what he did i mean he went and bought a park bench and put in his front yard yeah and he would just sit out there and watch it you know and it looked good I, I mean, have you know. um I have an older sketch which believe it or not I do actually try to sketch things out sometimes. I have an older sketch where it was a full on like cafe table in the front yard. Um and I did that sketch in the winter inside of the house and obviously not to scale. And so as I kind of got outside, I just realized it would be- make the space really compact, really tight. And that's another thing about design. You don't want, just keep in mind what you're really going to feel comfortable with. And walking space and space to move around is really huge, you know. Yeah. Um, you don't want to feel like you're like shimmying on one side, walking, you know, kind of sideways, trying to get in and out of a space that you've designed for perhaps sitting. You know? Yeah, you definitely don't want, I mean, that's a word worst case scenario mm-hmm. where you have to like shimmy through a little pathway to get in there <laughs> and then you get in there and you're totally enclosed yeah yeah uh-huh. and you have no idea what's going on around mm-hmm. you and i mean you know one of the things that i like i have landscape timbers on the edge of it and one of the, i like to stand on the landscape mm-hmm. timbers mm-hmm. so i need to make sure that when i do that that i'll be able to because that's something that i'm not going to stop doing i don't know why that's just what I do, you know, and my son balances on them and stuff uh-huh. like that. So, you know, those are um, was that by design or is that just something you, you after you had them, you know, you put them in, you kind of realize, oh, OK, this is a cool standing spot. I've always done it. OK, even going back. Always. So there are little yeah. small things that I end up discovering after I've, you know, created a design that I kind of, oh, I like sitting at this particular spot. Or I like kind of looking at the garden from this particular angle. Um, oh, it's really convenient for me to, there's, um, and it was very intentional. I had it built as like a ledge on the raised beds where I can kind of sit on it. But then I mm-hmm. realized my bottom was a bit too big to comfortably sit there. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So it is a great space for a coffee cup. Um, I have a couple of beds and I can't remember. It was very intentional, but I can't remember why I did it this way. So the corners of the wood beds go um, the four by four, I guess, on each corner is probably twice the height of the bed. So it Mm -hmm. basically goes above the actual build of the bed. And that's another great space for a coffee cup. You know, it's a great space for, you know, um, you know, pruners or something. So little bitty things like that are kind of just the bonuses, I think, for me, because I don't necessarily do all of those things intentionally. Yeah, because if you do a deep dive into my Instagram, you'll see where I had sketched out my whole backyard Mm, mm -hmm. and the hexagon in the middle. My original idea is like, I'll just put a bush in each of the corners. Yeah, yeah. And that kind of that has gone by the... That creates a level of balance, though. So that, that's actually a design principle for gardening, too. Yeah, and I think that still might happen, though, where each corner, each where the timbers meet, there will actually be some kind of, like, major structural, structurally important bush there. But, you know, I don't know. It's all something that we have to work on. And, I mean, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. We've been talking a while if we've actually taught garden design, but what I think is important is you kind of see the way that you have to work through it 
to design a space. It you know what I mean? It definitely take care with it. Definitely make it a conscious kind of plan. Um, yeah. So, you know, I am notorious for going out and buying a bunch of flowers Right. But I always know there is a particular space I'm putting them in unless it's containers. But, you know, so I know that this is the space that I'm putting it in. I'm not kind of with a fresh yard in the store thinking about a space I want to dig up and buying flowers at the same time. Like I'm not combining those worlds. It's definitely separate and apart. Like I start with the design of the space. So size. And then I start thinking about what I want to do with you know, what I want to plant to wear, you know, and I personally, I actually like to see, I don't, it's not an absolute requirement, but I'd like to see different flowers because that inspires me when it comes to what I want to put where in that design. Yeah. Like, I mean, you, you go in with an idea and you walk out with something completely different mm-hmm. and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you need to be prepared, especially, and we've talked about this in one of the last updates, if you're going in and you don't know all flowers like me, you need to be prepared to Google the hell out of something and look at it while you're there and take your time. So don't go in a hurry. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Because you really want to know, especially if you're buying like a flower. I mean, if you're buying something that's a bush, you're like, okay, I know what the foliage looks like. I know that it's just going to get bigger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you're getting a flower, you really want to know what the bloom looks like. And then you got to think about the colors and then you got to think about the heights and the structure and texture. And those are all important things. Let me know if you know or if any of the listeners know. I don't feel like compatibility issues aren't as big with flower planting and design as it is with vegetables. So that's... Um, from what I understand, I don't believe that's the case unless you have like disease issues. So you definitely don't want to put different flowers or plants together that have the same disease issue Mm -hmm. there definitely is like um you know uh, invasive flowers that's a thing right you know so you have that to consider but i guess i'm saying that um and maybe this is me trying to convert our gardening listeners our vegetable gardeners that aren't flower lovers I'm, i'm i'm like trying to convert one person at a time um i think flowers are easier i said it what are you gonna do I think that it's, well, I I honestly, I'm not, I can't tell you that, but I think that the decision process going through them is much more difficult. And that's a different, that's a different beast in itself. You know, coming from somebody who I've gardened for many years and been around them my whole life. And now I know why too, like my grandfather always grew the same flowers and there's two reasons for that. One that you didn't have the choices back then that you have now mm-hmm. 30 years ago mm-hmm. you didn't you know you had your i think he grew snapdragons geraniums violas and maybe something else and those were like the ones that he really grew but you didn't get these huge choices you couldn't go on the, there was no internet yeah there was no internet 30 years ago really you know and when he went to the plant stores like yeah you could get them But it wasn't really, you know, it just wasn't like it is now. So it's overly complicated. Yeah, I think um, it's interesting because I was driving with my mom the other day and we drove past a um, outdoor nursery that I go to. And I waited for her to say it because I thought I knew about it from my grandmother, her mother. But I wasn't certain. She said, oh, yeah, you know. Uh, Mama and I used to go there. Right. And so I said, well, yeah, you know, you know, I've gone there with her, too, or she's told me about it. But anywho, um, that area has a bunch of different varieties of flowers. And I think I maybe even quoted the wrong flower that she used to always plant. My grandmother, that is. She's always plant petunias. Um, mm. and you know, always put you them said in begonias. Yeah, I did say begonias. I, I thought that I met miss said it and said begonias, but I didn't want to make the mistake again. So thank you for that memory. No, that's sweet that you remembered my wrong, <laughs> my wrong note for my grandmother. Um, so anywho, petunias is what she used to always plant and I could actually see them in the flower pots. Um, and before I would go to like f- um, big box stores and before I actually traveled and paid attention, you know, when I go to, um, you know, nurseries and things, I kind of thought, oh, okay, well, those are what flowers look like. You know, like I didn't right. really think about all the other options, but I bring this up to say that one nursery 
has a bunch of options. And my guess is it had a bunch of options for years. Not nothing, not anything like we have now, but still. And I'm wondering now why she again chose the same cup. Geraniums were another one that she would plant, but the same couple of flowers is what she would traditionally plant. Um, I, I do want to, I don't, cause we've been on like an hour and a half now. I don't want to teeter into the whole, are we just, you know, a generation that's making things more complex than it needs to be. That's a different podcast Mm -hmm. that will be happening. (laughs) No, and I think there's nothing wrong with going all classic style either. Yeah. I think that that's um, severely overlooked Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. based on choices. And I think that, you know, I don't want to say they're a dying breed per se, but I think that they're less popular to the extent to where it's hard to find the classics now. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, and that's something that we're teetering with too, is actually doing classic flowers in there. So, I don't know. But, that being said, you know what time it is? It's time for the recipe of the day. Did you hear my stomach rumble? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's go for it. <laughs> Okay, so I've been thinking about this, and I'm, I'm taking an easy way out today, but I'm taking an important way out. So um, I, was, I had this in my mind that I wanted to do carrots, okay? And you just gave, in one of the previous one, roasted carrots. But I was going back and I was thinking, what are other ways to use carrots? Do you know of another way to use a carrot? Um, besides like adding it to a soup or something. Yeah. yeah. Soups or salads. Mm-hmm, Not mm-hmm. really, right? Yeah, like shredded carrots, raw, and then some type of soup or stew and roast it. Like that's all I got. Yeah. So I might go ahead and tell you that you were hit it on the mark with shredded. So anybody that's out there and you have a, a favorite muffin recipe, shred your carrots really fine and mix them into the batter and cook and bake them. And... <clears throat> the reason why I bring this up is because a lot of people have children and they don't like to eat their vegetables, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but they love to eat them muffins, yeah, boy. Yeah. And this is one of those vegetables that you can mix in while you bake and it will add sweetness and it'll get your bugs bunny on yeah, with yeah, nobody yeah. knowing. And there's a bit so, of texture that you're adding to the, the muffin? Um, Not really. You oh, don't really get a lot up. of texture. Yeah. It softens right up and you shred them when you put them in. So you want to shred them really fine. Um, and then you just mix them in there. You know, I'd mix like a cup of carrots in, a cup of shredded carrots in to be exact. And then you can get, so you kind of mix it in with it. And there's other vegetables you can do that way. Like spinach is another really good one that you can mix into a lot of different things and not, you won't get that flavor. You know, and I know, yeah, we we want the flavor. That's why we grow them. But in this case, what I'm referring to is like, you know, for children or even for yourself, if let's say for some reason you're not getting the amount of vegetables you want in your diet, this is a good way to kind of add that into it and not really have to worry about it. So, yeah, I um, like it. I like it because it is we're going to get to the point in the season where we're going to be challenged by, you know, how many fresh vegetables we have versus how many vegetables we want to preserve. So I'm always looking for, um, I, I don't know, because I, I immediately thought of like zucchini bread. And I wonder if there is a yeah. like muffin or a, a carrot version of that. Um, yes, it's called shred the carrots and mix it in. I love it's it. It's literally then. that yeah. easy. Yeah. It's just one of those things you can do. So we've done it for years mm-hmm. and um, it makes them a little bit more moist as well, because as they cook they will kind of release their juices and stuff like that. So I know it's cheating for the recipe of the day, but what I've really given you really given you is like 50 recipes because now you can go crazy. We've mixed them into pancakes. We've mixed them into waffles. We've mixed them into all kinds of muffins. You couldn't imagine. And it is the same thing as like a zucchini bread. Yeah. You know, so I had a, Oh, it's really not cheating response for you, but then you Mm -hmm. dropped the whole, it's really 50 recipes and like, come on, like now you're just, (laughs) (laughs) no, I thought I was thinking like, this could be a whole different direction. We take the recipe of the day because, um, 
Like, I love the simplicity of it's just another way to use what you've grown, you know, another way to use a veggie um, and, yeah. and probably underrated because I'm thinking I've never done that. Have you ever had carrot cake? I have. Boom. It totally makes sense, right? Like, it's completely logical. I can't believe you you came up with that on your own. You invented this. It's amazing. Oh, no, I didn't invent this. I know. <laughs> I, I did not invent that. No, I mean, it's, but, you know, we originally had gotten a recipe, and it it really does revolve around muffins for us, and um, it had muffin, it had carrots in it, and then we just kind of graduated from there. We're like, you know what, let's just try it. Let's yeah. just mix it in. What does your son think just, of it? I mean, he doesn't know. Okay. Yeah. 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 He doesn't know. You know, he eats it and he's like, mm, this is the best thing ever, daddy. You know, actually mommy, cause mommy's the baker. Daddy can't bake, but, um, yeah. So just shred them up really fine and add them in. It's, it's really simple and it's, it's a good way to add in. And there's, like I said, there's a lot of different vegetables like that, but that's a, a good one. You know, sweet potatoes is another one. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it gives a, a little bit of a flavor. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. I can and the see that. idea here is to hide the flavor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, That's the idea. So, I like and if it. you don't like carrots, but you know you need the essential vitamin that a carrot gives you, which is fiber, vitamin no, C, vitamin, vitamin E, vitamin vitamin A, vitamin B. Yeah, A. <laughs> I think it's A. Again, don't take our word for it. We're not nutritionists. <laughs> But um, yeah, and, it, and if you don't like them, try it. Just just add them in. So, and we like to take the muffins and bake big batches and then freeze them. Oh, okay. Wait, you freeze the muffins after they're baked, or you freeze the batter? We freeze the muffins after they're baked, and just throw them in the toaster oven. So, flip the flip the lid on you a little bit. Yeah, you did. So I was I, actually you know, surprised. I wanted to do carrots, man, but I just I could not come up with anything and I could not find anything that was really like different. You know what I mean? Other than like roasted carrots or add them in a soup. So I have one more for carrots that I'll save for, you know, a future. You save it because yeah. these recipes are really hard to give out. I, mean, I know. I know. Right. Aye, aye, yeah. Aye. Oh, you know what would be super cool? What? So you'll have to edit this out if this is not where you want to go with this, but what if we had folks contact us that are listening and say, hey, this is their favorite recipe and we can share it on the podcast? Oh, hell yeah. Why would I edit that out? I yeah, don't if you know. want to give us a recipe that you could share to everybody all over the world, then let us know. So Instagram, we the will backyard leave. gardener, spelled G A R D N E R, mm -hmm. or better be better gardens. Here, here. Send us the details of the recipe and let us know if you're comfortable with us. Say, say in your name and the deliciousness that you've created. You know, either way, it's fine. We can keep your name private, but uh, we want to share some of the goodness, some of the hashtag garden joy. Now know that I will be cooking it first and tasting it before I put it out there. So, Oh, I yeah, because we, we have to be able to vouch for it. So there, there is that. We have to vouch for it. I can't be <laughs> passing along any caca now. <laughs> That's that's the golden rule. But yeah, I mean, I have, you know, because, you know, recipes, people and actually I don't know if people would give us a recipe because they hold them near and dear to their heart. Yeah, it's like a whole thing, right? I mean, there yeah. there's some recipes that I don't give. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not many. I'm not that protective of many, but there are a couple where it's kind of like, I don't know. My cousin's um, wife, um, I mean... Maybe they were married eight, ten years or something before she got one of the popular family recipes. And I'm still questioning whether or not it was the right decision. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so I was cooking the other day and uh, my wife goes, that's really good. She goes, what did you put in it? And my son goes, if he told you, he would have to kill you. <laughs> and he would only tell you right before he broke your neck, mommy, just so you know. And she was like, I got it. <laughs> so, you know, it was a serious thing at that point. Mm -hmm. But no, I mean, you know, recipes are hard to come up with, man. And if you come up with a good one, sometimes you just don't want to share it. And absolutely, I get it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I get it. And I respect it. But mm -hmm. if you don't want to share it, you send me a piece of it so I can eat it. <laughs> Here, There it is. So I'm still waiting on Batavia to give us one with an edible flower in it. 
I don't do, and I've actually started growing some edible flowers, but I've never done like dishes with edible flowers. This is my progression. I just can't do all of these garden things at one time. It's so much. Um, so stand it by. At some point this season, maybe next season, you'll hear um, that I've transitioned into only eating flowers or something. I don't know. <laughs> she's gonna be Batavia's gonna be. A, um, she's gonna be a flowertarian. Uh-huh. You heard it first on the Backyard Gardens podcast. Flowertarian is that hashtag flowertarian? Did we just create? Shh. Yeah, we is. did. Sure. <laughs> She's a she's a flowertarian in the flesh. We're breaking the internet. <laughs> yeah, we are. It just did you hear it grind to a halt? <laughs> that would be terrible if you just ate flowers only. Oh yeah, yeah. And not to be gross, but I bet you'd have some sweet smelling farts. At first, maybe, but at some point, that thing is gonna turn on you. <laughs> it would. It would. It would turn like a bad habit too. So, um, yeah. So look. I'm going to do this project one way or another, and I'm going to keep you guys filled in on it. And I hope that we've helped you kind of maybe understand a little bit about garden design. I mean, we'll break into it a little deeper at some point, probably and give you like actual facts, but I really wanted to like talk it out and talk it through because as you know, as gardeners, there's not always somebody that's willing to listen to you design something or just talk about your passion people don't really care they just like to look so i wanted to bring it run it by batavia and i've i've had to bite my lip so many times about this because i was like i want to do garden design so i'm so glad that you held back um, because I have like been sitting up on the edge of my seat this entire time. This is <laughs> like, I feel like this is my retirement episode or something. Like, I feel like my work here is done. Um, no, no, I had fun on this one. I um, appreciate New host next week. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> We're cycling them out. Um, yeah. So absolutely. It's a fun project. I'm looking forward to hearing about it and talking more about it. Um, and again, I just love the concept of making an area that you really feel comfortable in and want to be in so yeah i have confidence that it's going to be something that's really nice yeah it's just it's not a spot that you just want to walk by you Mm -hmm. know you've got to sit in it and that's a different thing yeah that's a whole different beast so um yeah anything to tell the good people all righty so a couple of notes um looking at the airtime for this i'm going to make the commitment and if something else happens, don't call me out on it. So we're going to be in mid-June when this airs. Yeah. My garden's going to be planted. It should be planted before now. Before this airs. So we're going to be in mid-June when this airs. <laughs> <laughs> My garden will be planted. <laughs> I'm just trying. Look, everybody. I'm just trying to encourage her to step up her game. That's all I'm doing. Is this positive reinforcement? We don't want to say it a third time. The rule of threes. Do I need to say it a third time? (laughs) Go back and listen to the episode of what we're doing new in our garden this year, and you'll see why I do these things that I do. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, I wish I could forcefully deny this. And unfortunately, I need it. Right. Like, um. It's t- I'm, I'm hoping that next year I won't have so many like kind of false starts and, you know, but um, yeah, yeah, it happens. It yeah. happens. I think what's going to end up happening is you're going to start in June and you're going to cruise into the fall mm-hmm, this year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think that you are going to meet your your goal because you didn't say you're going to extend it on both sides. You just said you're going to extend it. Absolutely. So I think you're yeah. going to extend it. Yeah. I got faith in you. And by then I'll be in a place where I can actually make spring veggies like collards and kales that's Mm -hmm. going to be that's the pivotal moment of this of my garden life being able to start those from seeds i'm gonna break that code um so i have that garden planted um we're gonna do a um kind of month by month i may sprinkle in some other garden tours but check out my youtube channel at be better garden and you can see what the garden looked like before i did anything in may and then kind of what things look like as the garden starts to come alive and is actually planted in um so then we'll do some progressions as the month goes on it's it's one of my favorite things to do kind of looking back on the space so yeah look out for that 
and I can't really talk about what I have going on. I, ha- <clears throat> I have to keep it quiet right now, but um, just stay tuned. So to all of your streaming platforms, hopefully we will be there. But um, it will be gardening related for sure. You do not disappoint with the teasers and then the big reveal. <laughs> so I am like, I'm still, I don't know if I could get further on the edge of my seat without get, not sitting. You know? Dude, it gives me panic attacks to think about it. So oh, I'm going to sh- do it. It's, it's going to be happen. wonderful, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll see. I never think anything's wonderful until it's done. And even when it's done, I still think it's not wonderful. But that's just me. Like, even if it was perfect, it's never perfect enough. You know what I mean? Yeah, if it's garden related, then I can be proud for the both of us. So Okay. Yeah. I'll take it. And then if I have one fan and I'm happy about that. There it is. Yeah. But um yeah, so next week we have a garden update. So, you know, we're gonna talk about I don't even know what the hell we're gonna talk about, but you'll you'll figure it out. I mean we're gonna be in like both of us will be in a full set of swing when it comes to gardening outside, right? Because you've been there for a while, so um I'll be be joining you there. I won't be at the yeah. point where I'm harvesting a bunch, but that's okay because again, it's all about the the process here. Yeah, I'm gonna be harvesting a bunch, yeah. so but that's how it works. Show different off. zones. <laughs> ah, different zones, different lives. Absolutely. All right, everybody, stay safe. Keep it real. And until next time, learn to grow. See ya. I hope you enjoyed our conversation today. You can find us at Backyard Gardens the Movie on Facebook and Backyard Gardener on Instagram. And YouTube is Backyard Gardener where I'm doing videos showing cooking and building gardens and gardening tips, all kinds of good stuff. And you can find Batavia at... You'll find me on Instagram at B underscore Better Garden. And then you'll find me on Facebook, same name. And then I'm also over on YouTube at Be Better Garden. I am sharing hashtag garden joy every chance I get. I hope you enjoy. So if you have any questions, hit us up on all of our platforms anywhere you want. And we will be more than happy to help you with what you can. And again, thanks for listening. And we will see you guys next time. Cut. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in.